Well, ladies and gentlemen, let's continue with chapter uh, 8. Chapter 8 is part of one of the four chapters on convection heat transfer. Uh, we did chapter 6, which was on the fundamentals, then chapter 7 on external forced convection, and now we are busy with chapter 8, which is internal forced convection. We looked at the average velocities and temperatures, the entrance regions for laminar flow, how we can calculate the LH value. The LH value is how long it will take before the flow is fully developed with the velocity profile, and the LT value, which is how long it will take before it is thermally fully developed. Then, two very, very special cases, and, that, and those are the cases for constant surface heat flux, and then with the previous lecture, the one on the constant surface temperature. Now one of the things that we did when we looked at the case of the constant surface temperature is we have derived uh, the lock mean temperature difference. Okay, the lock mean temperature difference. Now the thing that is confusing to many students is we are going to introduce the lock mean temperature difference and then there are going to be problems. And with some of the problems you will have to use the LMTD method and with others not. So fundamentally you need to understand when you can use it. Okay. So let's start with that in terms of when we can use the LMTD. When can we use the LMTD method? Now, before we discuss it, let's just look at the theory or, and all the boundary conditions that were valid when we've derived it. We have derived it specifically for the case where we have a surface temperature which is constant, okay. and then the fluid temperature <laughs> did something like that. Okay, that was the inlet temperature and that is the outlet temperature. Now although up to now I have always drawn the flow coming in in this direction, it can be the other way around also. Okay. So the LMTD method is a method that gives us a very, very accurate representation of the, of the average temperature difference. Because normally what we would have done is to say, well, that is the inlet temperature, that's the outlet temperature, here is the bulk temperature, and then we would say, well, let's use that temperature difference with our heat transfer coefficient, if we know what it is, to calculate the heat transfer rate. Okay, so in terms of the LMTD, let's look at different cases. Let's look at the case where we had a constant heat flux with a constant heat flux, okay, CHF, constant heat flux, our fluid temperature on the inside would do something like that. Okay. Then our wall temperature, depending on how long it takes before the flow is fully developed, would firstly be so that there's a constant delta T there, but then we will have a developing region. Okay. So, if we can use the LMTD there, I will come back to it just now. Or then the case where we had the constant wall temperature, which is the same as there, where we have a situation like that. So using the LMTD here is absolutely correct. It will work very well. Okay. Now, let me just go to another case of a constant heat flux. Almost the same, again, the fluid temperature would increase, but now the wall temperature would do something like that. Okay. So it means it is a case where the flow is fully developed very quickly. Okay. Very, very quick, fully developed, and now we've got a delta T there. If we want to use the LMTD here, okay. remember the LMTD is equal to the temperature difference at the inlet, so uh, it would be equal to that delta T 
I, the inlet, and there's the out outlet 1, delta TE. Okay. So it would be equal to the temperature difference at the inlet minus the temperature difference at the outlet divided by the limb of delta TI divided by delta TE. And as you can see, we are going to have a zero value at the top. You see? If we have a case like this where the flow is fully developed and that delta T is a constant all the way. So delta T is equal to a constant. Okay. So there we can see that the LMTD is not going to work. Okay. But at the same time, if we just look at that problem and we use our judgment, we can see that the delta T is constant all the way in any case. Okay. So if you use the LMTD uh, approach, it's very easy to actually say, well, let's rather use delta T. Temperature, to di temperature difference, any one of the two, it will hold. Okay. Okay. Now a case like this one is obviously different because now you can see that that temperature difference and that temperature difference is not the same. Okay. So now you can calculate the LMTD, okay. can calculate it, and you will see that later on in the chapter on heat exchanges, it is actually quite a valid method or a well-established method to also in cases like that to rather use the LMTD. It is a very good representation of the temperature difference. Let's look at an example. Okay, an example is where we have flow through a pipe Inlet temperature is 15 degrees Celsius. The mass flow rate is 0.3 kilograms per second, and it is water. And the water is at a high pressure. And here we have steam on the outside, and the result is that the wall temperature on the outside is equal to 120 degrees Celsius and it's constant. So it's a constant wall temperature problem. The tube diameter is 25 millimeters and the average heat transfer coefficient is equal to 800 watts per square meter degree Celsius. Now they ask us to determine the length of the tube. Okay. So we need to know what should the length of the tube be okay. so that the outlet temperature is equal to 115 degrees Celsius. Okay. 115 degrees Celsius. Okay. So there's the tube. 25 millimeters, average heat transfer coefficient is 800, inlet temperature is 15, outlet temperature 115, we see the wall temperature is 120, what would you expect with the NTU B, the number of transfer units? It would be quite effective, isn't it? Because you can just look at the outlet temperature. This thing is going to do its job. Or in any case, you want to make sure that it does by actually then designing it for the correct length. Okay. Okay. So what we can do is we can say well the heat transfer rate is equal to the mass flow rate multiplied by Cp multiplied by the outlet temperature minus the inlet temperature. Okay. Now before we do that we need Cp and there are quite a few properties that maybe we're going to use. So we have to determine the properties at a certain temperature. The bulk temperature is normally the temperature that we use. Okay, so although we have 
something like that. Okay. Although that is happening, we still use the bulk temperature for the calculation of the properties. And the reason for that is that the Nusselt numbers and all the other experiments has been conducted doing that. So it makes it simpler for us. Okay, so the bulk temperature that we can choose in this case is very simple. The inlet temperature and the outlet temperature divided by 2. That is 15 plus 115 divided by 2. So we need to know the properties at 65 degrees Celsius. So if at 65 degrees Celsius, you go and look in your textbook, you'll find that Cp is equal to 4187 joules per kilogram Kelvin. Okay, so in terms of the heat transfer rate, we can now calculate the heat transfer rate. It is equal to the mass flow rate, and the mass flow rate has been given as 0.3 multiplied by the Cp of the water, which is 4187, multiplied by the outlet temperature, we want 115, the inlet temperature is 15, which gives us a delta T of 100 degrees Celsius, and the result is a heat transfer rate of 125.6 kilowatts. Right, help me quickly to calculate the LMTD. How are you going to calculate the LMTD? The LMTD is equal to the LMTD. How are you going to calculate the LMTD? Right, so it is equal to delta Ti and delta Ti is <coughs> what is delta Ti? A sketch really helps always. So we have a case where we have a constant wall temperature. Constant wall temperature would mean the wall temperature there would be equal to how much is it? Wall temperature? No, next yeah. You no next to you. The gentleman next to you. Wall temperature? 120. So the wall temperature, the inlet is 120. What will it be at the outlet? It will still be 120 because we have steam condensing on the outside. So the wall temperature remains constant. Okay. The inlet temperature is 15. Okay, and the outlet temperature? 115, okay, there's 115, so that is typically how the temperature profile will look like. So, the LMTD, okay, is equal to this temperature difference, which is equal to hundred and five degrees Celsius, that temperature difference there, and that temperature difference there is equal to five. Okay. So the LMTD is equal to delta Ti, which is equal to hundred and five minus five divided by the lin of 105 divided by 5. Okay, which is equal to 110 degrees Celsius. Okay? Somebody said no. As I've said yesterday, it's very easy to do calculations. Your fingers, sometimes you make a mistake. 
there we've got 105, there we've got 5, there's no way that the LMTD can be larger than 105. Okay? So that is not correct. Redo the calculation and the result is 32.85. Okay. 32.85 degrees Celsius. Okay, and 32 is between 105 and 5, so it makes sense. You happy with that? You agree? Right, so. Now let's calculate the length of the tube that we need. The heat transfer rate is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the area and now we use the LMTD. We use the LMTD. Okay. The heat transfer rate we've already solved is equal to 125.6 kilowatts. Okay. It's equal to the heat transfer coefficient. Average heat transfer coefficient has been given as 800. The surface area of the tube is pi multiplied by the diameter, which is 25 millimeters, one inch, multiplied by the length, okay, that is the surface area for the heat transfer. Zero, it's fine. Multiplied by the LMTD, which is equal to 32.85. So the length can be determined as 61 meters. Okay? 61 meters. Let's do it the wrong way. And many of you unfortunately are going to do that in the, in the test and the exams. Okay? The wrong way is... <laughs> The wrong way is to say, well, we have the wall temperature there, which is 120. We have the inlet temperature, which is 15, and that temperature, which is 115. Okay. Okay. So we assume a straight line. And then the bulk temperature would be 65. Okay, the bulk temperature, just the average between the inlet and the outlet. Okay, and then from the heat transfer rate would be equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the area, Ts minus the bulk temperature. Up to now, You've done all the problems where you've got the surface and the bulk, okay? So it is not strange that people make this mistake. Okay. The heat transfer rate has been solved as 125.6 kilowatts. It's equal to the heat transfer coefficient of 800. The surface area is equal to pi multiplied by the diameter, which is 25. Okay, multiplied by the length of the tube, like that. Multiplied by the surface temperature, which is now 120, minus the bulk, which is 65. Okay, and from that, we can now calculate the length as 38 meters. Okay. You see the difference? 38 to 61. It's a significant difference. So if we now look at the temperature profiles again, and please uh, have quite a large uh, y axis if you, if, you, if you generate this graph, just to make it easier for you. Okay. Okay, so there's 120 and 120, which is the surface temperature that remains constant. Here we've got 15, and there we've got 115. 
the approach that we've used now is to say that the temperature difference of the fluid on the inside follow this straight line and that is equal to the bulk temperature. Okay. While the temperature does something like that. Okay. So as you can see, there's quite a large difference. You agree? Okay. But what people make a mistake with, and ladies and gentlemen, listen very carefully. Okay. People would say, well, that temperature there and that temperature there is the LMTD. Okay, and that's not the case. Okay, it is not the case. So, in the center, that temperature there is not the LMTD. And if we get to that problem, I'm going to show it to you, and hopefully you will understand it a little bit better. Okay. But now I want to go back to this problem, and I would like to open it up a little bit. Uh, and that is by looking at the NTUs. Okay, the NTUs. Remember, yesterday we said the number of transfer units is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the area divided by the mass flow rate and the CP. And I've really emphasized it that this value comes from a derivation where we've assumed that the heat transfer coefficient is constant, okay, which in many cases it is not. So it is very, very important to remember that. And in most of the equations in your textbook, uh, the equation for the temperature line is e to the minus this. Okay. And I would recommend to you that if you can, to always work out the NTUs, because it says something. If you just do the calculations, you sometimes lose perspective of the problem. So please rather, when you do that, calculate the NTUs, and uh, that is what I'm going to do here. And in this case, it is going to be, uh, okay, before I do that, it comes from the equation, and that is now the different approach that we can use. The outlet temperature is equal to Ts minus Ts minus Ti e to the minus NTU. Okay. In your textbook, it is e equal to minus the transfer coefficient, the area, mass flow rate, and Cp. Okay. okay, so if we now look at this problem, and it has been given that the outlet temperature is 115, the surface temperature is 120, minus, again, the surface temperature 120, and the inlet temperature 15, e to the minus NTUs. The only unknown is the NTUs. Okay, the NTUs work out as 3.045. And yesterday we said that 2.5 to 3 is sort of the limit of a practical heat exchanger. 5 is really a waste of money, and even everything more than that really doesn't help a lot, because those two lines get so close to each other, no heat transfer really occurs. Okay. So if we have now the NTUs, okay, the NTUs is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the surface area divided by the mass flow rate and the CP. The NTUs is equal to 3.045, is equal to the heat transfer coefficient, which is 800. Okay, the surface area, pi multiplied by the diameter is 25 moles, multiplied by the L that we want to calculate, divided by 0.3, and the CP, which is equal to 4187. 
Fortunately, from here, we can also calculate the length as 60.87 meters or 61 meters. So that is the other way that you could have solved this problem, is by doing it from the NTUs. Okay. Okay. Now, in terms of this problem, in terms of this problem, let's define B there. Okay, B there. That one we define as M. Okay. The bulk temperature, the mean fluid temperature, and the surface temperature. And what we now can do is we can calculate the temperature there. Okay, you see. So we can calculate the temperature at point M, which would also be the surface temperature minus Ts minus Ti multiplied by E to the minus NTU used divided by 2. Okay. Of course, the NTUs, okay, the NTU is equal to average heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the area, the mass flow rate, and the CP, and that is equal to the heat transfer coefficient pi dl, okay, the length L, and divided by the mass flow rate and the CP. Okay. So, if we have the NTUs, and we know it is 3, then the solution here in the center will be at NTU at 3.045 divided by 2. Okay. So, if we put in all the calculations, I'm not going to do that, e to the minus 3.045 divided by 2. Surface temperature we have, okay. inlet temperature we have, and then we can solve the temperature at point M as uh, 97.1 degrees Celsius. Okay. So the temperature there is 97.1 and the bulk temperature is 65. Okay, the bulk temperature is 65. That temperature there is equal to 97.1. So let's just calculate all the delta T's. The first one is delta T between S, the surface and the bulk. Between the surface and the bulk. And that would be 120 minus 65. And that is equal to 55 degrees Celsius. Okay. So that temperature difference between S and B is 55 degrees Celsius. Okay, the next one is delta T SM between there and there. And that is equal to 120 minus 97.1, okay, which is equal to 22.9. Okay, 22.9. Now where is the temperature difference that represents the LMTD temperature difference? Okay, that is what we want to determine. So if we look at the delta T of LMTD, then it must be the surface temperature minus T, and we're going to use D for it. Okay, D for the LMTD, and we've calculated this as uh, 32.85. 32.85 is equal to 120 minus TD, and the result is that TD is equal to 32, uh, no, sorry, 87.1. Eighty-seven point one. 
too bad. Okay, so that temperature is at 87.1. So if we look at this problem now, where is D? Okay, D must be somewhere there. Okay. So the LMTD represents that temperature difference. Okay. Comes in into the integration. It's not the fluid temperature, it is not the bulk. It is another temperature difference which is much more accurate. Okay, any questions, ladies and gentlemen? It's a very important concept. Okay? All right. Now, let's continue with laminar flow in tubes. Laminar flow in tubes. It is theory, it is very important. Let's suppose there's our tube, okay, and we have laminar flow. If the flow is laminar, then the velocity profile must be parabolic, something like that. And that is the velocity as a function of r, and r is the radius of the tube. So the diameter is equal to 2r. We are going to look at two control volumes. The first one is a control volume in the dr direction. Okay, like that. And then another one in the dx direction. It would be for, for two different derivations. Okay. Two different derivations. Now firstly, from the fluid mechanics part, and we are not going to do okay. so from the fluid mechanics part we can firstly look at a force balance if we do a force balance we can end up with a velocity profile as a function of r, which is equal to 2 times the average velocity multiplied by 1 minus r squared divided by large r squared, the radius of the tube. You've done this already in fluid mechanics, so we're not going to do that in detail. Okay, this average velocity is typically as we do in heat transfer, we just we use the mass flow rate, the density and the area, and we will calculate that velocity. Okay. So that's the first equation that we use. Then from the energy balance, okay, from the energy balance, it can be, we've already done it, u multiplied by partial dt dx is equal to alpha, the diffusivity divided by r, multiplied by r, partial dt dr. Okay. And in this derivation we assume that qs is a constant to get that equation there. So as you can see what you now can do is you can actually take that and you can put it in there. Okay. And then there's some mathematics that I'm going to skip in the textbook, work through it, it's elementary, it's not difficult. And what you then can do is you can then solve that the mean temperature of the fluid is equal to the surface temperature minus 11 times divided by 24 divide, multiplied by the heat flux multiplied by R divided by K. Okay, so you can solve that temperature profile from that equation. But then remembering that the heat flux would be equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by Ts minus Tm. Okay? And 
When we do that, we have to remember it would be the case where the heat transfer coefficient is a constant. Okay. Okay, so this is a constant, so it is another assumption that we make. Constant heat transfer coefficient. And if we look at this Ts minus Tm, okay, and we look at that, Tm is equal to Ts, the result is that we can actually solve the heat transfer coefficient as 40 times, 48 times divided by 11 multiplied by K divided by D. Just going to clean some boards here. <coughs> Okay, now if we look at this and we want to calculate the missile number which is equal to the heat transfer coefficient multiplied by the diameter divided by K and we would take this heat transfer coefficient, we would put it in there okay, then what happens, we get a missile number of 48 divided by 11 Okay, which is equal to 4.36 4.36 okay. but okay. very important quite a few things that I've said but that we have to remember when we use this equation firstly it is for laminar flow okay. laminar flow it is for fully developed fully developed okay and there shouldn't be any secondary flow okay, secondary flow and we will address that in the next chapter what is secondary flow? secondary flow would be if we look at the tube and because of this temperature being higher than that or the other way around there's a density difference and therefore there are buoyancy effects and the result is that on the inside of the tube we have flow like that okay. so for that special case when there's no secondary flow fully developed laminar and constant heat flux okay. then the missile number is equal to 4.36 we can do a similar derivation for the constant wall temperature case the constant wall temperature case okay, and then we can derive that the missile number is equal to 3.66 what does it mean? very important missile number as a function of x in any tube we will have a distance before the flow would be fully developed that is equal to LT and it would mean that the missile number is equal to for the constant heat flux case the constant heat flux then it would be equal to 4.36 and for the case where we have a constant wall temperature then it would be equal to 3.66 so it is only for fully developed flow then those two derivations can be made and they are very important any questions ladies and gentlemen if not thank you very much uh, hello you can